Hi, I'm Jack Hunter. And I'm Evie Reardon. And you're watching WCAT's Weekly News. We hope everyone is having a blast in their Jan term courses. There has been a ton happening in the community as of late. And now we have WCAT's Brantley Black with Mr. Frappier, Director of College Counseling, who was a victim in the recent Fort Lauderdale airport shootings. Hi, I'm Brantley Black with WCAT here with uh, Mr. Frappier, the uh, Director of College Counseling. So, Mr. Frappier, hey. um, just to start off, would you mind talking us through just kind of your experience in Fort Lauderdale and what went down? I was uh, traveling there on last Friday um, to go to a work conference, um, and then I get to the airport terminal um, and the baggage claim area, which is a f an airport I have flown in and out of maybe 30 to 50 times. Nothing seemed that wrong, but, uh, but I was in a situation by the baggage claim where um, you know, we're just starting to get our bags um, and, and a shooter comes in. And I'll mention here too just some of the details that the other media don't have time for is that um, the, this particular flight had a lot of families that were traveling and getting ready to go on a cruise. And when you're traveling as a family, you stick together, you clump together. When you've been traveling all day, the last thing you're thinking is, I just need to grab my bag and let's go on the cruise. So where do you stand? At the very yeah, beginning very, very. of the conveyor belt. Um, but sure enough, when the shooter came in, it was that high concentration of folks that he was targeting. There was a bullet that um, entered my backpack uh, and went through my laptop. And the bullet ended up in the side pocket of my bag. Yeah. When I left my school in Miami, there was a family that um, I had worked with all three of their kids. And, um, and so that was kind of their goodbye gift to me. You know, and I still have the note and they all signed it and they said, safe journey, Strap. Mm -hmm. When I finally got back to making phone calls, they were the first family, I, one of the first families I called, you know, I'm like, thank you for that backpack. So the story has been about the laptop, but it was also, yeah. the backpack mattered too. When the shooting started, what was your immediate reaction? I'll tell you a couple things. The, um, when the popping started happening, it was a very quiet gun. And it, it was no louder than what would be coming out of a kid's loud video game. And in the ambient noise of an airport, you're like, this is just another sound, you know? And it only took a man who screamed out, this guy's got to gun everybody down. That's where we all dropped. At first, my, I thought, whatever, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, until, until it became immediately real. And then when, I, when I'm on the ground and, and, uh, and I look up before I close my eyes, um, I get a glimpse of the shooter. And I, and I thought a couple of things. Um, one, this guy's tiny. When we think about what a, what a shooter or a terrorist looks like, and I don't want to use the word terrorist in, in this situation. It was a, a, a mentally injured uh, veteran. He's wearing a baby blue shirt. You know, you think about folks wearing dark or black. I'm like, he's trying to blend in with the cruise people. After the shooting had occurred, who were the people that, that came to help the most? Who were the people that were the first responders? Sure. There were... I mean, the, the first thing were medics that were arriving. There was a whole influx of different law enforcements. Um, there were four to six different jurisdictions that showed up. Federal, state, county, city, airport police, just all of that. When it became clear that I was the only one with something very, a, a physical object, you know, I, I was additionally sequestered into an area by the FBI. Was it tough for you coming back to Westminster after all, all of that happened? It was, not, um, it was not tough at all. Everyone here kept me in touch uh, with what was going on, and I was just expressing back to them how thankful I was for everyone thinking about me. Um, and I knew that uh, when I was ready, I was going to come back, um, and, and yesterday was the day for that. So how would you describe your experience with the media after the incident? When I finally get out of the airport, one of my friends um, picked me up um, uh, from the drop-off point. He had authorization from his college to buy me all new clothes. And I'm like, well, let's go to Target. And he's like, we're going to Banana Republic. Like, we're not going to Target. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. like, oh, come on, you know. And so, so I'm in Banana Republic, and then, and then I get a text from a CNN producer and I'm like, do you want to talk to Anderson Cooper? And I'm like, yes. Thank you so much for your time, Mr. No, happy to do it. Uh, happy to be awesome. sitting here uh, and to chat yeah. with you all. All right, well, I'm Brantley Black with WCAT, once again here with Mr. Frappier, and now back to you in the studio. 
We are so thankful that Mr. Frappier was unharmed in the shootings and are happy to see him back on campus. Last week, Martin Luther King III came to Westminster to speak in an assembly, where he talked about many topics, including politics and the civil rights movement today. I had the opportunity to speak to MLK III following the assembly. Hi, my name is Jack Hunter. I'm here with Martin Luther King III. Mr. King, so can you tell us, in, under a new era of politics, how do you feel and what direction do you feel like the civil rights movement is headed in? I think the country is very divided and the president-elect has a task of figuring out how do we bring the nation together. I think that that can happen, but I think that it has to be very thoughtful. There has to be a, a thoughtful process as to how you bring the nation together. I think that as it relates to civil and human rights, the, we're in, in a challenging place. We're in a place where we haven't been in recent years quite. Uh, it has been fermenting for a while now, meaning that the resistance has come to a head now and I think there are those who feel like, okay, we don't have to worry about civil rights uh, anymore. But the reality is they are not going anywhere. People, people are not going to allow themselves to be mistreated. You emphasize your issue in poverty about the lack of opportunities for many. How do you think that's going to change? Are you hopeful about it in the future with President-elect Trump? Well, I'm, I'm certainly hopeful. I think the President-elect has said he wants to address these issues. I think we have to hold his feet to the fire, meaning you've said that you want to address uh, disparity in communities of color. You've said that you want to address the quality of life for poor in, a, in this nation. Then, you know, if, if, if we're able to put together like a plan to revitalize infrastructure, whether it's bridges, uh, whether it's schools, whether it's highways. Our infrastructure is in bad shape. That's a 15-year work program where people could have viable jobs and opportunity. That would be a big step in the right direction. With the upcoming Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. federal holiday, what do you think, what do you want people to remember him as? He was a change agent. He believed that we must identify with the best of what we what exists, what makes our nation. And, and see, quite frankly, Americans are really incredible people. But I know that well. Whenever there's a conflict or a crisis, Americans come and respond, whether it's a tornado or a, herf, or a hurricane or earthquake or a tsunami. Americans are one of the first groups of people who run to help. That's who we are at heart. What happens is, after we've assisted, we go back to our separate corners. And I think we need to respond more collectively as we do in crisis. It was a pleasure talking to Martin Luther King III to hear what he had to say and what he's involved in right now. Back to you, Evie. Great story, Jack. Thanks, Evie. It was an exceptional opportunity for me to speak with Mr. King. I'm sure many of you have noticed the new renovations in Turner Gym. Over the break, the school renovated the campus center and added new carpet and seating. WCAT's Aditi Pandey spoke with Michael Isaac and Tammy Maynard about the renovations. Let's take a look. Hi, I'm Aditi Pandey for WCAT. This past winter, Parker Campus Center and Turner Gym underwent some renovations. Let's take a look. Here I am today with Mr. Isaac and Ms. Maynard. Why did the new renovation in Parker Campus Center um, happen? Well, basically, Mike Isaac and Tim Downs approached the project team and asked for a new concept of how to renovate the space for for the Turner Gym Campus Center to incorporate more seating, just to make it better, better for the, the kids to come in here and be able to socialize and to congregate and do their homework. The building was, was opened in 2000, and we had come to the point where we wanted to offer a different environment and a newer environment to our students and student athletes. What was the reason to change the tile to carpet instead? One of the main reasons, we wanted to try to create a more social environment, a softer look and feel with the tile floors, uh, the sound coming off the tile and making the area very loud and we want to just warm it up a little bit. So when you said about the electrical outlets that are there earlier, mm -hmm. why was that a big part of the new atmosphere? You know, if you do need to charge your battery or anything, you have the access to the, the cords in the floor. What benefits and disadvantages do you think that the change will provide? Benefits is more space to, to be able to congregate. The disadvantage could be the carpet, you know, having stains in every place, and it just it just requires more upkeep for, you know, not only the, the housekeeping staff but also for the students as well to kind of you know, make sure we kind of all work together to, to keep this maintained. Well, and we also like for our students to, to have something new. 
to experience something new, to see some change, <laughs> to see some growth. It's also for visiting teams and groups that come in and see a well-maintained area. Be sure to check out the newly renovated Parker Campus Center and Turner Gym. This is Aditi Pande. Now back to you in the studio. There's been numerous sporting events that have occurred during Jan term. The boys varsity basketball team lost 67-61 to in double overtime against Lovett on Tuesday night. After the tough loss, WCAT's Will Benton spoke with starting sophomore guard Carter Osterling. Hi, this is Will Benton, WCAT, here with Westminster varsity guard Carter Osterling. And we're going to talk about the game from last week against Lovett and the hard-fought double OT 67-61 to loss. So, Carter, what were your biggest takeaways from the game? Well, I mean, we definitely learned how to guard. Guard's a really good guard like Ryan Greer. Uh, we did a good job trying to contain him, but he is a good player. So he's going to go out there and get his. But defensively, we did a good job, and we're, just, we're learning to play games down the stretch better. So what, what do you think of the end of that game, especially the end of the first overtime and in the regulation? So, you know, what could have gone differently to close out the game? Because, of course, Westminster had a 47-41 lead. So what can you guys do going forward to, you know, hold on to the lead in the closing minutes? I mean, there were some tough calls down the stretch, as most of you guys should know, but, I mean, we just got to learn to play through those calls and keep playing our game and don't let the, the other team, the other fans, or the refs, don't let any of that get to us. What should we expect out of the varsity team for the rest of the season? We're just going to go out there and try and get wins one by one, one game at a time. All right, thank you, Carter. This is Will Ben with Carter Osling, WCAT. Circle of Women is having a spring kickoff meeting. It will take place next Thursday on the bottom floor of the library at 3. Everyone is welcome and encouraged to come. The varsity wrestling team competed in the AAA area duels last Tuesday, where the team beat Adairsville and lost to Sonoraville. Last week, the swimming and diving team took on Marist. The combined boys and girls team score was a win for the Wildcats. We'll have to keep watching these teams in preparation for the state meet in early February. Both boys and girls varsity squash teams are playing challenge matches to get ready for the U.S. Squash National High School Championships. At this point, Vishan Patel is number one for the boys and Nia Patel is number one for the girls. Well, that's all for this week. I'm Evie Reardon. And I'm Jack Hunter. Thanks for tuning in to Jan Term WCAT News.